Uh, it's morning news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Now, uh, we're live uh, tonight on 3FM 92.7. So beginning today, Ghana Tonight is live on 3FM 92.7. For those of you who are on the go, we are responding to the calls that a number of you made. Um, as you're driving right now, you can tune in as well to 3FM 92.7. And we're live on right there on Ghana Tonight. Now, news just coming through. Right now, the Ministry of Health has disputed claims by residents of La that uh, the La General Hospital project has been halted. Well, we were there earlier today, but in, in a statement released by uh, the ministry just some few minutes ago, uh, the ministry is saying that the construction of the La General Hospital has not been halted. It says over the past few weeks, significant progress has been made. Uh, with various stages of construction expedited to ensure timely completion. There's a part of the statement quoting, understanding its importance to the community and the wider health care system. The ministry confirms that the contractor overseeing this project has recently submitted a certificate for payment as part of standard operational procedures. This certificate is currently uh, being processed by the ministry. But you know what? After this Ministry of Health statement, I want to take you back. My colleague, Sarah Pencro was there earlier today. And there's a reason why the residents say that the project has stalled, because they don't see any activity happening there. And bear in mind as well that there was a timeline that was given for the completion of the outpatient department, OPD, for this La General Hospital. That's October, end of October. Today is the 28th, right? The residents are within their right to want to raise questions about what is happening with this project and the promise of that timeline of end of October for the OPD to be ready. So take a look at this, what we found out earlier today. The reconstruction of the La General Hospital has lingered since 2020 when President Kufu Addo cut sword for the reconstruction project to commence. After three years, Construction work began a few months ago with an October-November deadline for the OPD services to be completed and open to residents of La. This is the state of the project site when we visited on Monday afternoon. The seventh floor staff accommodation unit is almost completed while the main hospital structure is on the ground floor. Information guarded by TV3 suggests that the contractor has run out of funds, forcing the workers to vacate the site for about a week now. The workers, we are told, have all left the site since the work stalled. A former administrator at the La General Hospital, Chris Anan, expressed disappointment at the pace of work. Every project, before you start, you have funds made available. You don't just start and then halfway through you see the money is finished, which was uh, totally a mistake on part of government. They started building flats for doctors. Without hospital, what are doctors coming to do over here? So far as I'm concerned, uh, nothing is going on here. Residents who have been eager to see the project completed, at least before the December 7 elections, say their hopes have been dashed. From past this seven months and they are working, but recently, I learned that they're not working again. Why? Because the money is finished. The government is not paying them. But recently, someone died because of heart attack. What is it? I don't know what it is. Someone died just over here. If the hospital is, is, is there, at least the person might be survived. 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 At least the person they were working and we were excited. Now nothing is happening and they are not saying anything tangible. Well, so that's the verdict of the residents. The, the woman you heard speaking right there says she sells just across the road. So if there's activity there, they see it, they know it. When the contractors are on site, they are the ones who are there to pass a verdict on their presence. For the past a little over a week, there's nothing happening there. And bear in mind as well that there was a timeline of end of October for this outpatient department of this La General Hospital, uh, which has been reconstructed after it was demolished, to be completed. So 
if that timeline is in mind and we go there, we ascertain the fact that based on the current state of affairs at that site, this timeline certainly may not be, be achieved two days away. And you saw those structures there. So we will go there again at the end of October to ascertain whether that promise of the OPD being uh, completed by end of October has been achieved. But this is what the ministry is saying, as against the verdict of the people, the residents who live in the area. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, round 10 of the Afrobarometer survey report makes stark revelations um, about some institutions and how the public perceives them. Um, let me take you th into the details and we're going to break it down one step and one after the other every step of the way so we don't clump everything together. Well, we're starting off with the focus on the first, first five of top perceived corrupt institutions in this country. And we're going to take you on a journey and I want you to follow me closely because this Afrobarometer round 10 follows up from what the Afrobarometer round 9 survey also um, put out. Now, this round 10 survey puts out a very rather worrying picture for the institutions perceived to be corrupt. Take a look at this. In the round 9 survey, between 19, which was conducted between 2019 and 2022, the police came tops at the most perceived corrupt institution in this country. 65% of the respondents said that the police was most corrupt, followed by the Office of the Presidency. 55% of the respondents said they were most corrupt. And some of the respondents said, yes, the Office of the President was corrupt. Tax officials came in third. Members of Parliament came in fourth with 54%. That's, came in third with 54%. And then judges and magistrates. And then also you have the Electoral Commission. So bear in mind, Judges and magistrates, members of parliament, tax officials, office of the president, police tops with the most perceived corrupt institution in this country. And the electoral commission also came through in that safe position. Now, fast forward to the year 2024. This is the round 10 of the Afrobarometer survey. The police tops again. 63% of the respondents, and bear in mind, in 2022, 65% of the respondents said the police was corrupt. And two years on, 63% of the respondents said police is corrupt. And guess what? The Office of the Presidency also follows again as number two most corrupt or perceived corrupt institution in this country. And then the third being tax officials. And members of parliament still remain fourth. Judges and magistrates come again in the fifth position as the most perceived corrupt institution in this country. And then the Electoral Commission. So not much has changed between 2019 and 2024 when it comes to the institutions that citizens perceive to be the most corrupt institutions in this country. Between 2022 and keep this in mind, police officers of the president, members of parliament, tax officials, and then look at this, 2022, police officers of the president, tax officials, members of parliament, judges and magistrates, same order. Now, let's have a conversation on this. Sevia Kuji is uh, the head of public affairs, in fact, he speaks for the Ghana Bar Association. Um, he's gonna be joining us on Zoom right now for a quick conversation on how, especially being one of the stakeholders in, in the judicial architecture in this country, they react to judges and magistrates continuously being ranked that fifth most perceived corrupt institution in this country. So could you appreciate your time? Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight and also on 3FM 92.7. Certainly, this ranking is not one to be proud about, is it not? Uh, I am not pleased with the report because... Um... I am not surprised, but it's just that I'm disappointed. Why is because that? Because my expectation is that based on the reports we've had so far, apart from what we have uh, been announced uh, uh, yesterday or so, uh, over the weekend or so, I expected them to get out of this. But the question still remains, who corrupts them? My answer is that they don't corrupt themselves. We corrupt them. The public corrupt them. So my uh, point is this, that 
we all have to make conscious effort to make sure our institutions work. If we allow the institutions to work, uh, I'm not sure anybody will be interested in cutting corners. And I have a point that I've always made that with our current laws on bribery and corruption, I think it's a big joke that we're trying to fight corruption with such laws. The basic law says that the giver and the taker of a bribe are equally guilty. So the expectation is that a payer of bribe to a giver of bribe will go and report both the payer and the giver. But the question is, if the payer was a person of principle, would he have paid a bribe in the first place? If that is, if the point is that because he wasn't principled, that's why he's paid, they never expect him to go and report. So I think that we have to get back to our basics by way of principles and uh, moral, and uh, we'll make progress. Because it appears nobody's question, questioning the source of wealth of anybody in this country. That is why, uh, for instance, last week we had a very young person going to jail just because he wanted to be rich overnight. I see. But I can understand the route that you take in, in yes, you are disappointed with this outcome. You're not necessarily questioning the, the concerns that people have with about the judiciary or the magistrates and, and then also the, the judges for that matter. But then again, the bigger issue here is that if people continuously are losing confidence in the magistrates and judges, as has been seen continuously in this Afrobarometer survey, then they will resort to other means of getting justice. That's where the concern is, Mr. Koji. It does, because I am baffled because what I know is that one of the requirements of becoming a judge, for instance, is to be of high uh, moral integrity. Now, what it means is that nobody will have to come and tell you what to do as a judge, for instance. You have to live up to expectation. So I think that is the individual who will have to do all this. Because at that age, why should anybody tell you not to take bribe? I keep saying that as a judge, for instance, you have a contract of employment. That spells out your conditions of service. The only thing you should be expecting is improving your conditions of service and nothing else. So I don't think that those positions are just for anybody. If you know you are not a person of integrity, do it, just don't go there. Because I'm expecting a situation where people approach judges and they will call the police in. But it appears that is not happening. And it will not happen too because of the laws we have. I see. But from where you sit, and, and Ghana Bar Association being a major stakeholder in the judicial architecture in this country, with the details of this survey and the continuous perception that people have about the, the magistrates and others being corrupt, what should be done to address this, this perception and then also those experiences of reality that these people have had? I think that you have to come to the realization that if the whole of society even sees that Wealth is only calculated or, or uh, considered in terms of material gains. There should be one group of people who will say that for us, our wealth is our honesty and integrity. I expect that out of them and nothing else. So we, as a larger society, we have to begin to reward people who have integrity and are honest. I think that's the only way we can fight this battle. But no amount of guidelines, no amount of ethical uh, rules that we put in place will fight this unless individuals are committed to uphold their integrity along the lines of values and principles. Other than that, we are joking. We are simply not committed to fighting corruption. Corruption is now gradually getting institutionalized in Ghana. Let's accept it. It appears it's even in our genes. If you acknowledge that that's, that's a challenge, yes, there's that lack of commitment as you have, I mean, Ghana Bar Association are talking, a lack of commitment to fight against corruption. The next concern will be that after acknowledging that there has to be some more effort, what has to be done? That's where the concern, and I'm going to leave you on this, what has to be done, Mr. Koji? 
I cannot. That is why we have to make efforts to change the law. Why are we able or were we able to make laws to mine in forest reserves? Yet we cannot change this law on bribery and corruption and say that only the taker is guilty. I tell you, if we do it that way, we'll make progress. If you like, let's try it. Okay. We were able to change a situation of uh, where people shouldn't go into forest reserves. Even right. our great grandfathers who did, were not letted were able to preserve forests. And we, those who have been to school and have learned about these things, are not able to do it. I, I don't know what is wrong with us. So let's right. change the law on bribery and corruption and say that only the taker will be guilty and see if this will not stop. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, you, you recommend the amendment of the laws to make only the taker guilty. And, and in your view, that's also going to help in the fight against corruption in this country. Appreciate your time. Uh, Xavier Koji is a private legal practitioner. He speaks for the Ghana Bar Association talking about this Afrobarometer survey. We did the, the comparative analysis between what's captured in the Afrobarometer Round 9, which was also surveyed between 2019 and 2022, and then the Round 10, which was released on last Friday, which captured the, the views and concerns of people between 2022 and 2024. And look, the first five institutions perceived to be corrupt hasn't changed over the period. 